Welcome to the Property Monitor Market Report for the month of November 2021. For the first time since the market bottomed out last year in November, and after appreciating for 12 months solid, we've now recorded the first negative movement on the index, for prices falling just under 1%, 0.99%. So this is natural, this is something we wanted to see happen. We didn't want the market to run away, and as anticipated, we started to see the market continue to slow down, and a negative month's natural. What's gonna be looking moving forward is we're likely to see price appreciation and maybe some depreciation over the coming months, somewhere in the one to one and a half percent raise or even lower, but ultimately a trajectory going forward that will still be an upward trend. Property prices now stand at 968 dirhams per square foot, up roughly 1.2% quarter on quarter, and up 18% year on year. We're now at the equivalent of prices seen last time in May 2013, and we're 23.3% relative to the trough of the last market, and just 21.6% away from the peak. So now let's zoom in and take a look at the current recovery, and contrast it back to the previous recovery cycle. So we're in the recovery cycle now of 13 months. So let's look at the previous recovery cycle of 13 months from October 2012 to October 2013. Prices appreciated 19.74%. In the current recovery period for the same 13 months, prices are up 17.35%. So we've started to decelerate a little bit compared to the recovery of the last market cycle. If you look closely at the chart, you can see that yes, there was a small negative month around about a year in, uh, but you can see the negative month we've had this month is considerably larger than that from the previous market cycle. So where will prices go forward? Well, the last cycle, we saw significant jumps of two to 3%. As I previously mentioned, we don't forecast this happening. We're looking for smaller month on month price appreciation in that one and a half to half a percent range, up or minus on those with ultimately an upward trajectory. So the big question that always comes up is how long is this market recovery cycle going to last? Well, if prices do appreciate slowly over the coming months, it should be something that's much more drawn out. And what we're hoping to see, rather than something like the last recovery where it only went on for about another 10, 11 months, we're hoping to see here something with these small increases that could stretch over the next 18 months, almost up to three years. Taking a look at transaction volumes from November, well, it was a record month. And not just any record month, one of the biggest records we've ever had. Coming in at 7,015 transactions for the month, November was not only the strongest November ever on record, but the ninth strongest month for transactions ever recorded. Coming in just behind October 2013, where there were 9,000 transactions recorded. That gives us a year-over-year -year change of 78%, a year-over-2019 change of 40%, and trending well above both the 10 and 14 year averages. In fact, 71.8% above the 10 year average and almost 100%, almost double the 14 year average where it was 3,526 transactions. So if we take a look at transactions for the year, November, that record month, it's somewhere we expect it to be. We expect November to be a strong month. If you've been listening to the previous reports, what you would have noticed and what we commented on with the previous two months, October and September, where we normally experience a ramp up from September, October going stronger, and then into a strong November, were actually low transaction months, atypically low on a seasonality basis. November has bucked this trend and come back in a big way. At 34.3% month on month change and 78.1% year on year. So on the back of that record strong November, how are you looking year to date? How are you looking for annual transactions? Well, at just under 56,000 transactions, how we've closed out November, and well on pace to hit that over 58,000 transactions that we forecasted about three months ago. So that puts us at 54.7% above transactions that recorded year end 2020, 33.5% above those that ended year end 2019, and well above both the 10 and 13 year averages of 31.8 and 34.8%. And by the end of the year, we should have surpassed the number of transactions that happened in 2014 and be close to one of the last market highs of year end 2013. Now let's break down all those transactions for number and dig a little bit deeper and look at registration time. Let's break them down and look at off plan sales, those with NACU, and then completed or title deed sales. So for the month of November, there was a big jump in the amount of off plan sales, 55.1% month on month growth. Additionally, title deed transactions during the month 
increasing by 20.5% on a month-on-month -month basis. If we break down registration type on a market share percentage basis, last month completed property transactions came in at 54%, the lowest market share in the last 12 months. This means the off-plan segment is growing. And it's no surprise, developers are back on with new launches every month. In the last month alone, there were over 2,000 new villas and townhouses bought to market and an additional 2,000 apartments, 4,000 new inventory units coming on. So while the market share for completed properties has fallen to 54% for the month, it's still well above the 12 month moving average of 61.4%, the 2021 year to date average of 61.1%, and above the 2020 average of 53.3%, and well above the 2019 average of 44.5%. Moving on to the CIS statistic of registration type, we look at sales recurrence. That's initial sales, which are developer sales, regardless of registration type, so it could be an off plan or even a completed property versus resales, which are subsequent resales of a property, also regardless of registration type. So for the month of November, initial sales came in at 4,562, almost a 38% month-on-month increase, and taking up a 65% market share, where it represents a 1.6% month-on-month increase. Resale transactions came in just below 2,500 transactions for the month, also increasing, but at a lower pace of 28.6%. Resale transactions have been falling since their high of almost 52% in January 2021, and now reaching one of their lowest points in the current market cycle of 35%, much more in line with the low 30% of 2020 and 2019. What's caused this to happen? Well, it's natural when there's been more off-plan launches. Most of those sales are happening as initial sales and not resales. So that's been pushing this percentage down. It's something that will continue to happen as well as more and more developer launches occur. Also to keep in mind is that resales of completed properties are really starting to slow down. A lot of this is due to lack of supply or lack of well-priced inventory. We've talked about this previously that gap between buyer and seller expectations, between that listing price, that asking price, and what the buyer is actually willing to pay, we've not seen this gap bridge. We're still seeing overpriced properties sitting on the market and therefore less resale activity. So let's take a look at property type trends. That's breaking down property sales by apartment, villa, and townhouse. What's been moving and how does it look historically to what's been moving? Well, last month, apartments, villas, and townhouses all appreciated market-wide. What we want to look at now though is dig a little bit deeper again and look at the initial sales recurrence, those developer sales, and the subsequent resales to get a clearer idea of what's going on. So initial developer sales, you can see increases across the board. But if you take a look at the dotted trend line, you can see overall in apartments, historically, there's a number of sales increasing. Same with townhouses, but villas starting to decrease in that long-term historic basis. If we look at what's been selling in these, there's not a lot of surprises here. It's pretty strong with the main developers in town. In the villa property type, Harmony and Talal Agaf by Majid Al Fatim, last month 124 sales, followed by Maruj and Al Fajan by Nakheel with 84, and the Pulse Villas in Dubai South with 37. And if we look at townhouses, again in Talal Agaf, Aura and Aura Gardens, with 335 sales for the month. In Arabian Ranches 3, across the various phases, 223 sales, followed by the Valley with 81 and Villa Nova with 72. And then if we look at the apartments, Regalia and Business Bay, 357 transactions for the month. J1 and Business Bay, 94 transactions. Astra and Alborari, 125. And in Shoba Heartland, in Mohammed bin Rashid City, 94 transactions. So you can see these projects have been launched over the previous months. The transactions are now coming through and that's really what's growing the property trends. The developer off-plan sales, the return to things how they were in previous years. Over the coming months, we can expect to see further off-plan sales. With Damak Lagoons, with almost a thousand units in the Santorini phases and another phase soon to be launched. Talal Gaff with Aura and Aura Gardens, and registrations expected from those, and new phases from Ema and Arabian Ranches 3, Eli Saab, and in the Valley with Talia. And for apartments, Damak with Kavali Tower, almost 500 units there coming to market, Skies by Danub with over 800 apartments, and then additional projects by Ellington, by Prime Residence, and by Azizi, which will also bring almost a thousand new units to market. So if we look at what's been happening in the resale side of market by property type, 
apartments, they're on the rise. In key communities such as Business Bay, Downtown, Dubai Marina and the Palm, and a little bit less in JVC, JLT, and International City. You can see there's considerable slowdown in townhouse sales, while villa sales, slight rise there, mainly led by those in Emirates Living, and specifically in the Springs and Meadow communities. Expect these to continue their slowdown or to continue to have lower transaction volumes and not be as popular. Why? It's because most of the people that needed to sell have. Those that don't, a couple of them are testing the market, Others are just keeping it off. Now it's time to break things down by price tiers. What happened in November? Well, this is where I get to say, I told you so. I was right. Um, I said there'd be growth in the one to three million price range, and there has been. And specifically, the one to two million price tiers. So growth in this segment has come heavily from Regalia and Business Bay, Astro and Alberari, Palace Beach Residence and Beach Mansion at Imar Beachfront, Executive Residences in Dubai Hills Estate, and the newly launched Cavalli Tower in Media City. Additionally for the month, we saw growth in the three to five million and the five to 10 million price tiers. These being driven by sales in Talal Al Gaf in the Harmony phase, and again by Palace Beach Residence and Beach Mansion at Imar Beachfront. So now let's move from looking at the monthly November results to the year to date numbers for 2021. Pretty clear to see from the chart, there's been movement in the upper end of the market. Everything from that 1.5 million and up all in green across the board. Why is this? The majority of those sales, it's where the market demand's been. It's been for villas and townhouses in key communities. That's where the growth's been, as opposed to that lower segment of the market where not as much has been trading hands. So like we do every month, let's take a look at that fun 10 million plus price category. How many transactions were there? An increase on last month, up to 124 transactions in the month of November, and making up a 2.4% market share. If we look year to date, there've been just over 11,000 transactions in this category. That's 180% over the amount that recorded in 2020, 275% over the amount recorded in 2019, and 436% above the number recorded in 2018. So now let's move away from the nine price tiers and condense it a little bit and just look at the three main price tiers in Dubai. Those under a million, those between a million to three million, and then three million and above. So the three million plus tier is the one I really want to pay attention to and is the one that has had the most change. In November, there were 1,207 transactions. Almost 23% of the transactions last month were in this three million plus price tier. On a year-to-date basis, this brings us to 7,913 transactions in this category, up 172% over 2020, 129% over 2019, and 189% over 2018. What's really been moving this? Well, we talked about the 10 million plus category. What's really moving it? It's the three to five million tier. That's where the most activity has been happening and gonna to continue to happen. This is where we're seeing most of these new villa and townhouse projects come on. That's the spot they've been targeting. It's also where the higher end apartments have been targeting. So expect and watch out, mark my words, there will be continued growth coming from this three to five million category. So let's take a look at what's been happening in the mortgage market. With a record number of sales coming through in November, did mortgages follow suit? Actually, they didn't. Mortgages declined in the month of November. At 1,427 transactions, mortgages were down 11% month on month, yet up 13.2% year on year. Apartments grew marginally at 1.1%, and villas grew slightly more at 7.5% with the loss coming in in the townhouse segment. Only 129 mortgages last month, a 63.3% month-on-month decline. If we break these mortgages down further, that 1,427 mortgages for the month, how many of those were new origination mortgages? That's mortgages for properties that happened in the same month the property was purchased. That came in at 44.5%, a significant increase of 13.1% month over month. So while this increase is good, it's somewhat misleading. New originations may have increased, but they've increased on a market share basis for the month, mainly because bulk transactions are down. Bulk transactions came in at 19.6%, declining 17.4% month on month. With other mortgages coming in at 35.9%, an increase of 4.3% month on month. Breaking down those new origination mortgages, we can see that there's a loan to value, an LTV of 76.3%, up a couple of percent over last month, 
where we've been sitting around about 75% for most of 2021. The average ticket price for the mortgage is 1.82 million and a purchase price of 2.38 million. So where have all these mortgages been happening? Well, Emirates Living tops the charts, specifically Meadows and Springs, coming in at number one with a 7.1% market share, followed by Dubai Hills Estate, then Jumeirah Village Circle, Maidan City, and Dubai Marina. So why is Maidan City making it in some of the top communities for mortgages this month? Well, it's mainly because of Centurion Onyx and a bulk registration there, 66 mortgages totaling 24.4 million. So what to expect with mortgages going forward? Well, with interest rates hike imminent in the US and the Durham being pegged to the dollar, that trickle on effect to interest rates increasing here is definitely gonna occur. It's probably gonna happen in Q1 or Q2. So in all likelihood, we can expect mortgage transactions to rise in the coming months. That being, if there's available properties for those to have mortgages against. So let's see if that buyer-seller divide in pricing, if that gap can be bridged, and let's see if mortgages continue on their recent boom. That was your property monitor market report for the month of November, 2021. If you liked the video, be sure to give us a thumbs up below, click subscribe for more, or check out our website, propertymonitor.com for more info.